Um, hello everybody, um, this is uh, another book review, I, I put up another poll uh, earlier this morning, um, and it was Clash of the Philosophers, um, and it was between Friedrich Nietzsche, um, Beyond the Good and Evil, and the one that, well, only two people voted, but, well, at least some people are taking interest, yes. Uh, and The Art of War by Zonzo. Uh, the Art of War won this battle. So we'll set Nietzsche aside for today. Ah. This is one of the, This is the most precious book in my library. Now, I, again, I am sorry that it is backwards. Its characters, The Art of War, The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Fun fact about this book and me. Um, I, I, I promise to chop anybody's hands off. Who, yeah, you try and steal this book. I will take your hands. Anyway, this book talks about, except it's 2,400 years old, and yet it's philosophy and its tactics and its writings are still applicable to not only modern warfare but to also um, businesses uh, and strategy oriented things like businesses and uh, even like trading small traders um, other things um, during the Korean War, Korean War, the Vietnam War, um, every Vietnamese soldier was issued this copy. Uh, not this copy, I mean the art of war, not this specific copy. Um, so that they can learn from it and generals on the ground that uh, could couldn't really commune that well with HQ or something. The guerrilla tactics that this implores people to uh, adhere to is absolutely marvellous. Now, chapter three. Uh, chapter three, page 31 of this copy, point 18. This is, um, this is quite a famous quote from Sun Tzu. Um, it's in the Sabaton song, The Art of War, uh, at the beginning. Um, yeah, point 18, chapter 3. Hence the saying, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained you will also suffer defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Now, even even that can give you an idea of um, Zanzu's beautiful, beautifully written piece of strategic philosophy. Talking about like um, he 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 was one of the first to kind of have this idea of spies. Not really the first, but in the sense the ones that he set the foundation to the idea of uh, employing spies into enemy ranks. And then from the inside you can create discord within their government or business um, in a, in a uh, more guerrilla warfare type sense. And erode it from the inside. Instead of having to fight, you can still win. And he talks about that he will win the battle before there even is a battle and that basically means that he is so ready in a sense he is everything is planned for pretty much every scenario that no matter what attack comes he will win now nobody can fully nobody has a, a clairvoyance so so crystal clear that that kind of you know, those premonitions can be prepared for, but he talks about, in a sense, that if attack does come, he not he, he, he has technologies, he has soldiers, he has 
guerrilla warfare tactics. That's a lot of this book is a lot of what a lot of people use and call today guerrilla warfare. You know, non. What would you say? It's not non-uniformed almost. Um, which is he he's, he he always talks about going with the flow of war, have a path, but never never continue down it if it starts to crumble and say if you if this one tactic won the battle the last time don't do it again because the enemy are going to start to see that pattern and take advantage of it now if that method wins you a battle try another method that might lose that might lose you the battle it might just my it just might make you win the war now this isn't just for strategies and leaders. That's obviously what it is for, in a sense. But I also interpret it for everyday life. In problems that I encounter, like don't let the enemy figure your patterns, in a sense. Don't let gratuitous things, mundane things, get you down. Come up with new ways to do them. Obtain your victory daily through boring obstacles by making it fun, dancing, singing, whatever you want to do. I, I write a bit of poetry here and there, in my nice notebook, um, for a bit of escapism. Um, and a lot of what I, uh, my personal philosophies come from Zhang Zi. Now, this copy, specifically, um, has a beautiful introduction talking about the history of Zanzu, um, who he was as a person, where throughout time the art of war has appeared, like Napoleon Bonaparte used the art of war, uh, like I said, the Vietnamese, and modern generals today still use the art of war. But um, it talks about that at the beginning, whether there's even this strange debate, a bit like Shakespeare, where was Zunzu even a real person, or was he this, um, was he this avatar of other generals, um, that kind of thing. But at the back as well, the, it talks about, um, you know, major wars, influences this book has had, and even, there's even, uh, in China, there's an art of war theme park. It's backwards, I know. Um, and rather small, but if you can pause it, invert it, go ahead. Yep. <laughs> it's the Art of War theme park in, uh, where is it? In 2003, at a cost of 65 million yen, which um, dollars is 7.9 million, the Sonzu's Art of War city opened as tourist attractions in Binzhou, in Humin province, allegedly the birthplace of Zanzu. Now, I probably butchered those Chinese pronunciations. I don't speak Chinese or Mandarin. Um, it also, this, this is a deluxe copy. This is a, this is a beautiful copy, specifically. Um, you've got this beautiful gold minlay. I think you can see that, can't you? Just about. Uh, it's a bit tricky with the lighting I have, but uh, yeah, you get the idea. Beautiful velvet red. Then you get this nice cover. Now, unfortunately, when I was moving things about, somebody scratched this. Somebody. No, it wasn't me. Whoever has scratched this, I will um, destroy. <laughs> I'm joking. Or am I? No, I'm joking. But um, this is a beautiful golden. Uh, it's not, it's not embossed or anything. It's just nice looking at it. This is a synopsis or a blurb. Um, synopsis is a much fancy word for it, really. Um, beautiful. Just even if you don't like the art of war in itself, which I don't know why you wouldn't. It is beautiful. There's a reason that only 13 chapters, there's only 13 chapters of this actual book. Um, and it's still survived, lasted, and still is being used 2,000, 
400 years after the first initial creation. I mean, that is a testament to the author, the philosophies, and the general, get it, general, the genuine intellect that has gone into this piece of work. So uh, I do implore you to pick this up. You can learn many things. You can learn how to come, overcome obstacles and if the world um, suddenly becomes this post-apocalyptic wasteland as it seems to be at this moment, at least you'll know how to lead an army. <laughs> well, that's for today's book review. Um, thank you for watching. Um, this is my second. If you have any other like book book ideas, um, just let me know. Um, whether you want history, um, philosophy. Um, I have a shelf dedicated to World War Two, so if you want anything like that, or even Hema sword combat, um, just let me know. Okay, thank you.